Okay, so now after creating the sign out functionality, we're going now to create a new listing API for, you know, creating a new listing for our real estate application. So we could close all these things out using this close all, collapse this using that. And all you got to go is to the back end and we have to create an API in the beginning. So we go to the index.js. Remember that we had this app.use and slash API slash user. We have also app.use slash API slash auth. We're going to create a new route that's going to go app.use and it's actually going to go slash API and then we're going to say slash listing. All right. This is our, and, um, you know, this is going to be our, um, you know, route and we're just going to be calling it as listing router. So just like how I got suggested, we're using that. Now, of course, you would require to import this. So it's recommended. First, let's create it. So let's go to the routes. And over here, we just have auth and we have user. We're going to create a new one, which is going to be called uh, listing.route.js. So we created a route, which is called listing.route.js. And in here, we're going to have the following. So first of all, we're going to import, let me just make this a little bigger. So first of all, we're going to import express because, you know, we're using express to get the routes. So there you go. Um, one other thing is now, you know, since the listing.route.js has to be completed right now, so import express from express. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, you know, create this uh, router. So essentially to create a router, you could use route router is equal to express dot router with a capital R. Once that router is initiated, you could now have the router dot get and uh, essentially you could use the you know http methods so actually we're going to use the first one which is to create a new listing so we're using post and it's going to be um first of all the path so essentially it's going to go slash create to create a new listing so it's basically if you go from here it says that it's going to be slash api slash listing and then once here we go slash create right further slash create we have to first verify whether this person is authorized to create a listing or not remember that we had uh, this verification um, perfectly aligned here so right now let me just sign in with google it's going to allow me to sign in and uh, you know once i'm signed in i could go to the home page so um i should be navigated to the home page some reason I wasn't. So let me just see what happened. So yes, could not sign in with Google syntax error. Expected end of JSON input. I guess, we, yep. Yeah, because of this issue, you know, it's not running. <laughs> so we have to fix this up. So the first of all, let's go and uh, try to verify the person. That's what I was about to say. So of course there's an issue over there as well. So I'm not sure, but let's see, continue with Google. We have one bigger issue and we're going to have to fix that out. Uh, of course, that there's some issues within the application. It's not finished, so I can't demonstrate everything. So actually, we need to authorize the person. Remember that we had created this verify uh, token utility. Uh, so verify token. Uh, and it's coming from utils verify user. And it's actually verify user.js. So uh, let me show you how that actually looks like. So if we go here into the utils, folder and in here you see verify user you could see that this verify user is essentially getting the access token from the cookie okay it's basically getting the access token cookie and it calls you know the token and once it gets the token if it's not uh, you know the same as the match of the person uh, you know it's unauthorized and if it does we just verify a jwt with the token and the secret key and you know it depends whether this user is uh you know authorized or not if it is you know we go to the next next means we could actually go to the next part within this route so this router first verifies whether the user is authorized and if it's cleared we can now um take it to create a listing so we could say create listing and this is a function maybe a uh, actually a controller 
So um, you're going to have to create a controller now. So go in here and over here we're going to have listing.controller.js. So this is where we create our listing controller. Um, and the function that we would need is export const listing, um, create listing, listing. And this is an asynchronous require, request response and next. And essentially we could put a try and catch. And for, uh, you know, the error, we could just handle it with our middleware. Um, so essentially right now we have this create listing and you could have this exported and in the listing .route.js, you want that create listing so to get that you would have import create listing like this from slash controllers and listing.controller.js perfect and the same thing goes for index since you know this is the route i actually need to export this route so if you look at this route you have to have that export default router and once you do this you could go into this and you could actually use this listing router here. So let's go here and we have it imported. So import listing router, router from routes, and then we have listing.route.js, perfect. And now, you know, it shouldn't give us any problems. So let's just go back and, you know, this is all working and let's go to the controller and let's complete our controller. So we have to basically uh, build a listing. And a listing will consist of different properties and things. It's just like another post method um, that we've done throughout this series. Um, and it's going to be very easy. So there's not going to be an issue creating this at all. So first of all, what we do is we have to determine um, that if we want to create the controller, we have to check whether, you know, the listing is existing in a model or something like that. So we basically say list and uh, listing and equal to and we have an await and then we have a listing dot create function <laughs> now we don't have a model right now so i'm um, normally you know whatever is passed through the client's uh end i want that request dot body and i want to make a listing out of it of course it's saying like it doesn't exist so it's recommended to go to the models and create your listing model so you could actually say listing dot model dot js so it's listing.model.js and you could actually create your model here. So let's first complete the model and we'll say import mongoose from mongoose. We have to um, use mongoose for this. And uh, what we're going to do is we have const listing schema is equal to a new mongoose schema. Okay. And then inside here, we put our rules object. Uh, so it's an object and we put all the uh, rules for it, creating the object. Essentially, we need a name for our listing and we could say the, um, okay, it just added some random stuff like trim true and max length 32. We don't want that. We just need type string and we want required as true. The next thing we could have is the description for our listing. And that could be, you know, a type of string. And then you want uh required as true as well so let me just have it true and of course there are some random stuff here let me just remove it and just close that okay okay so now the next one after description is address where the listing um exists so you could have type string and we have required as true <laughs> And then we have more like, suppose regular price, the re regular price of a listing. So, um, this is normally a number and the required is true. Next up, next up is, um, the discounted price. So you could have discount, discount price and you have type number and required true. Now we have bedrooms, so we could have, uh, let's just go here, bedrooms. And we have type number and we have um, required true. And then we have want furnished. 
you know, if the room is furnished or not. And that's going to be a Boolean and required as true. Now we need a type, whether, you know, it's a rent or sale. So this is also now this is not going to be it's actually going to be a string type, whether it's rent or sale. So we have string and then required true. It just adds random stuff over here, but ignore that for now. Um, it would have offer. So we have offer, you know, if it has like any discount or something, and we'll have that as a uh, type as Boolean. And, you know, required as true. Okay, great. So everything looks good. And, uh, you know, we keep moving forward. I mean, one thing that, you know, uh, um, normally you could do is just have this comma at the end. I think that's okay yeah so let's just keep going back down and uh, then we have more things like we have image urls so image urls will be the images of the you know the house or the thing what's being sold the listing basically type would be an array of images and the required would be true okay the last would be the user reference and this means uh, the person who created the listing and that's how it's a type of string and you could have the required as true okay so this is basically the point there we're gonna have that crossed and after that we want one thing to track and that's whether we could uh, uh, check what how this uh, listing was updated or created so get the timestamps of them so to do that it's so simple we can write after uh this right after this bracket so this uh wait a minute so i don't like suggestions what they keep giving me okay so look this purple bracket is coming here this this one all right so we want right after that we have or whatever pink it is uh so what you want is you want timestamps to be true. So you could actually have it like this or right afterwards. You could have timestamps to true. Okay, this means that, you know, you could get and track everything. And then this is normally the end of the entire schema. So let me just um, fix this format. So format document with or just like that. And now you can see essentially this and then we have this purple and then we have the essentially this purple was the entire object. And after the object, you have the timestamps true and then this parentheses for the entire schema, right? Now, after that, we could just create our model using const listing is equal to mongoose.model. Dot, mongoose dot and we have uh, the listing. We make sure that it's not plural. It's a single listing. And MongoDB would automatically make it lowercase all and then would put an S at the end. So you would see listings, okay? And over here, what we do is we get the schema and put it in. So now we could create, a, this is gonna create our model. We could export this model using export default and we're gonna have listing like, like this, that's all. So now we have this model created and we could export it, which is great. Now we could use it anywhere we want. We could go to the listing over here and we could just import that listing. So let's go over here and you just say control and space. And it says over here, you know, create listing. Wait a minute. So, okay. So just over here, control and space. And you could see that it detected it. It's from this model. And uh, you could say model.js right here, right there. Perfect. We created the listing. <laughs> Once the listing.controller.js, you know, does the uh, creating that uh, listing dot create we want um a, re a response so we could just say return a response status whether it's created or not 201 means it's created successfully and you could just say uh you would just throw out the listing uh, you know whatever has been passed you would just return that back um and if an issue occurs you could just have next error so pretty much that's it format document and you know this should be working i mean everything looks good so now that we have all of this we could actually 
test this uh, listing route ourselves. So the thing is, let me just have this because there's too much. So to make things easier, we could use chat GPT for giving us some sample data. So at the moment, I'm going to go to chat.openai.com and I'm going to say, make me a sample JSON response with uh, some dummy data uh, for the following um, MongoDB schema, S-C-H-E-M-A, okay? Now check this out. Now it's going to give us some da uh, data and I could be able to use this. So now I, I have this, I just copy this entire thing. You can see that normally uh, all of them have commas, but the last thing that are within the list don't have. So this is very important to note. And now we could go to Thunder Client and uh, we could actually call this. So if I go to localhost, um, I could, I could actually just get this one, but this one is not a po this is actually a post method and it's going to be API slash user. It's actually called API slash listing slash create. And there's no ID and we have a post method. We go into the body and we put JSON text and we actually could just bring this thing in. So like that. So this is our, you know, our data that we want to send. Let's see how it sends. And if we do that, it says 404 not found. This means that cannot find API listing. Okay. Means like we uh, can't find it. So we have to see how it actually looks like. If we go to the route, we have slash create. And if we look at that, uh, creating, right? So it's create. And let's just look at it closely over here. It says over here, slash API slash listing. And then inside of it, slash create. So it should be slash API slash listing and then slash create. And now if you do it, you are unauthorized to create a listing. And this is 100% valid because we are not logged in. We should be logged in to create the listing. So to get logged in, you could essentially first send the request to log in. So, I mean, this is there. Uh, this is delete, this is update, this is update, and this is sign in. So normally this is an account, it should be available, let's sign in. So we're still unauthorized, I don't know why, oh no. Okay, so post method, API login, false, uh, invalid credentials. Did the credentials change? I'm, I'm believing um, the credentials changed or something. So, uh, I'm gonna have to check this out. You could either go to, uh, you could either just uh, figure it out. So I'm gonna go to continue with Google. Let's just create that account again. And we could just update our password. Go to here. So this is there and this password will just change it to one, two, three. Okay, now a profile updated successfully. Let's just sign out. Make sure the uh, now, you know, the database should be fed and we should be signed in hundred percent. Awesome. We just updated our password and now we are able to sign in. Let's go back here and let's try to create this now. Awesome. Now we created it under our, under our reference. So I believe that, uh, at the moment you could see that this is just user one, two, three, but this ID should, uh, I don't know. I 65. Uh, nine e forty five four five. What's that? Five. Hmm. It's not five four five. So this is a separate ID. I mean, it's a completely different object. And you could see that you know I created the listing and it's going to be in the database. So this API is hundred percent working, valid. Now let's go to the next part.